Hello, this is Jenny in the Sanctuary on Esoteric Online. This week I've got Steve Mitchell with me, who's becoming a bit of a regular feature on the show, and today he's going to talk to us about earth energies and ley lines. Hi, Steve. Hi, Jenny. Um, if you could perhaps start by telling us a little bit about the history of, um, of ley lines, because although obviously they're ancient in origin, they were only really rediscovered at the beginning of the 20th century, weren't they? Yeah, it's kind of crazy, all this rediscovering things. It's a bit like um, Colombo kind of finding America, isn't it? You know, people have been there before, people have been there a long time. I think the issue with, with um, all this kind of esoteric, if you like, or occult as it's labelled, which just means hidden um, knowledge, is that it is literally hidden. People kind of either hide it or it gets hidden for a number of reasons, whether it's religious, whether it's spiritual, whether it's persecution. So the the knowledge of ley lines has been there since Ill, bleh, ever, forever, the dawn absolutely, of time. the dawn of time, and I'll explain why in a minute. Um, 1921, I think, is where you're roughly referring to Alfred Watkins. He wrote a book called The Old Straight Track. Um, the trick with Alfred Watkins was he used to... Um, work for his dad and he used to kind of go out on deliveries and stuff and allegedly I mean there's various different stories told um, he was sitting up on top of a hill and kind of had a revelation or he was looking at a map and had a kind of thought and so forth um, Alfred says kind of in his own words that it came as a kind of inspiration if you like um, that he noticed that certain important landmarks seemed to be in a straight line hence the old straight track now, when you're talking about landmarks, um, you're talking about prehistoric sites, aren't Absolutely, you? Absolutely, and kind of not as well, because then there's another key in. Prehistoric sites in terms of stone circles, burial mounds, cairns, and so forth, added on top of that churches, um, crossroads, and tracks, hills, roads, high ground. hills, high grounds. The list goes on and on. The list goes on and on, really, yeah. Absolutely. It all really ties into this kind of weird word, lay and lay. Do you know what lay means? Well, in my extensive research that I carried out, um, it's something to do with a bit of cleared land, isn't it, in a, in a straight a line? A bit of cleared land, yeah. That's one of the keys. It also ties in etymologically to the word bright or light or bon, bonfire, bell, lay. Right, so it's got the loads fire connections of, yeah, as loads well. Yeah, loads of hidden things. And that's kind of one of the keys that a lot of people started off with I suppose I think you've kind of come across the own fortune haven't you that's right yeah um, in the goat foot god I think she was one of the first to put forward the the more mystical side of the ley line and the fact that there could be a power or an energy attached to it yeah because of course Alfred was just really looking Alfred first name terms good guy yeah he was Running a geographer wasn't he he was, he was more yeah. of a cartographer he was, he was kind of just looking at the fact that hey 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 why are they in straight lines is it just a case of kind of it's the easiest way to find your, your way really from one point to another in a straight line back to the old joke you know why did uh, Romans build the roads in straight lines so they didn't drive their horses around the bends but um but um there's <laughs> another answer to that but I won't give it on national I this you to someone whom I totally love, Dorothy Leon. Dorothy Leon has led a very special life and love to have her tell you about it. One of the spectacular things that she's done that's inspired me so much is that she developed the wheel with 19 spokes map, the map I also call Earth Star Western North America. So can you tell us, Dorothy, something about how you came to discover this pattern of points around the Grand Teton? Uh, yes, I started out by flying in my husband's little light plane, and as we were flying around, I would suddenly see a mountaintop with kind of an energy coming out. I've always seen energy all my life, uh, auras and all different types of energy. And so it didn't surprise me, I saw this energy at the top of the mountains. I eventually called it mountain fountains. <laughs> and uh, then I would notice that this energy seemed to be going in the direction of another mountain peak in the distance. And this kind of surprised me. So when I would get home from these rides, I would uh, check on his aeronautical maps and start marking the ones that I had seen the lights 
and the energy coming out of. And then I would figure out by taking my ruler and find out that they were making these triangles. There would be either three mountains or two mountains and a river or the different elements seem to work together in that way, the water. And um, so I started that way and then as it expanded, it got more and more into different geometric patterns that I would see. And then eventually I was told in my meditation to check out the Grand Tetons and that it was the center of a great wheel with 19 spokes. At first I didn't quite know what that meant, but I started marking that on my maps and I was just, and I didn't fly over those, I didn't go that far, but um, it turned out to be, there was 19 different either mountains or lakes or rivers in a precise pattern around the central hub of the Grand Teton. And it was just amazing. It was like God and the creators had just marked everything in equal positions all around. So you had some preparation for this because you've been seeing energies like auras and that kind of thing? Yes. And when you saw the energy coming out of the uh, Mount McLaughlin in this area of Southern Oregon, what did that look like exactly? A fountain? Like a fountain? Uh, yeah, kind of a thin line of energy. If you've ever seen uh, or noticed the the energy that's over a radiator, it uh, kind of moves. It's kind of like that, only more distinct into definite patterns. And it would come out just kind of like a line, and then I would see that line, it would go over towards another mountain. It's quite fascinating. And so every place that I saw any of this light, I marked on my maps and found out that they were connected to different geometric patterns. So you started out, you had a couple of triangles, and mm -hmm. these are equilateral triangles? They're yes. triangles where each side is the same length. Mm -hmm. And then you started seeing these more complex patterns, and you're using an air chart, and you start to see a correspondence between the points and magnetic disturbances? Yes, the magnetic disturbances and the fault lines, they all seem to play a part in that. And not only at the was there a triangle, like uh, say a lake and two mountains making a triangle, but at the point beyond the triangle there would be a magnetic disturbance just in a straight line beyond that. So I marked all the magnetic disturbances also. This is all mentioned in... Uh, what is known as an energy grid or grids. These are force lines of energy. Some people call them ley lines, some people call them dragon lines in China, meridians, whatever. Where these lines of force cross, you create a vortex. Where many of these lines cross, you create a colossal vortex. And therefore you have enormous energy which you can use to create and do various things. This guy um, was an Englishman in a place called Herefordshire, and one day he was on his horse at the top of a hillside and he suddenly looked down into the valley and saw these lines in a sort of psychic way all over the place, straight lines, and they connected the sacred wells, the sacred places of worship, the points where the churches were built, the, the hillsides, etc. And this now, as we have moved on, has been um, confirmed by the scientific world, those with an open mind anyway, um, that this grid line, uh, grid system actually exists like a, like a web around the world. Now where these ley lines cross in their most powerful way, where most of them cross, just happens to correspond with where the ancients had their most sacred ceremonies and their most sacred places. Stonehenge and places like that were built on them. So where the lines come in and the vortex is created, that is where they built the Stonehenges. The Avebury is another stone circle and um, energy complex in Britain. That's where they built uh, all over the world their temples to access this energy.